Hello and welcome to Beastopilisus, the hairy beast, where we talk about everything hairy and extinct. Do you know what day today is? Today is National Fossil Day, October 15, 2014. It's a day in which we get to celebrate the scientific importance of fossils for understanding our, our world and how it works and functions. It's also a day of celebrations of activities at museums across the nation here in the United States. As a, as a really small kid, I always had a rock collection. I was always going out and collecting rocks. I had a little tricycle that I'd ride around in and pick up rocks. And I'd bring them up to my room and I would organize them. When I was about three or four years old, I went out with my parents getting the firewood for the, uh, for the coming winter. And I was playing around. I had a little rock hammer that I'd been given as a gift. And I was cracking rocks. And I found, I found this rock, and I broke it open with my little rock hammer, and I picked up this piece of rock, and you can see right here, right there, is this impression of a clam. Right there, there's a nice mold of a, of a clam. And I picked up this rock, and I looked around. I mean, I'm in the, in the middle of Colorado. There's mountains all around me. And here I found this fossil of a clam. This, this fossil I came to learn is a, a fossil called Ironoceramus, and it's known from the uh, Cretaceous. And it's a marine uh, bival, uh, mollusca, uh, belonging to uh, a group similar to the clams that we find today. But here I was in the middle of mountains. There's mountains all around me. And I looked at this fossil and I realized that this was evidence of a world completely different, a, a Colorado that was underwater, uh, under the ocean. And the thing that struck me most about fossils and the importance of fossils is that they, they tell a story. They tell a story of a different world than we live in today. And I thought this was completely fascinating. Now, I didn't know any paleontologist. I didn't know you could actually make a career of studying fossils. And uh, so I put this in my rock collection, and it was an, an important specimen. And then when I got into junior high, I still wanted to be a geologist, but I wasn't quite sure I wanted to study fossils. I didn't know you could actually make a living studying fossils. And so I was interested in finding diamonds and finding gold and things that you could actually make money uh, doing. And um, in junior high, I was bullied quite a bit. And so being the nerdy, crazy person I am today, it's not surprising to know that. But one of the ways that I would avoid the bullies um, at school was that I would get a library pass each morning. And the library pass would allow me to go to the library uh, after lunch and uh, avoid the school grounds uh, where I'd get beaten up. So I'd get a library pass and I'd go sneak up and find a very quiet place in the library and sit and wait out the, the recess. And one of the books, the biggest book that was in the library, was a copy of The Origin of Species by Charles Darwin. And it was a really nice old copy. It was actually illustrated, it had illustrations in it. And I pulled out the copy and I thought, wow, this is the biggest book in the library. I'm going to read it. But then I got to almost the end of the book. And there's a, there's a section in The Origin of Species which is called On the Poorness of Paleontological Collections. And Charles Darwin wrote, Now let us turn to our richest geological museums, and what a paltry display we behold, that our collections are imperfect is admitted by everyone. The remark of the most admirable paleontologist, Edward Forbes, should never be forgotten, namely, that very many fossil species are known and named from single and often broken specimens, or from a few specimens collected on the same spot. And Charles Darwin was lamenting the fact that there weren't that many fossils, and there weren't that many fossils supporting his ideas of, of natural selection. Later on, he wrote, From these several considerations, it cannot be doubted that the geological record viewed as a whole is extremely imperfect. But if we confine our attention to any one formation, it becomes much more difficult to understand why we do not therein find closely graduated varieties between the allied species which lived 
at its commencement and at its close. And all of this got me thinking about this fossil that I found and how important even these fragmentary fossils are in understanding how species come about, how they change over time, how the world has changed. And so from that point on, I became really fascinated by paleontology and I wanted to study it. So it wasn't necessarily a fascination with dinosaurs, it wasn't necessarily a fanta uh, fascination with uh, museum collections, it was trying to solve a puzzle that Charles Darwin laid out, of trying to find species that uh, change through time in the fossil record, and the importance of fo the fossil record towards the ideas and theories of natural selection and evolution. And this got me uh, very interested, and so when I got to the point of going off to college, I wanted to study paleontology. You know, it's more just discovering fossils on my own and going out and observing them and collecting them and studying them. They got me interested in this field of science. So I hope that you, when you go out for a hike and look for fossils, break open rocks, bring a rock hammer and look for, you know, evidence of a different world a different, strange, bizarre world that's totally different than the world that we live in today. And I think that this is the strength of paleontology, is that it's a window into worlds that don't exist anymore.